It's been a real treat to cover Ad Infinitum thus far on this channel and get a grander experience of enjoying their work. You know, I started back at Chapter 1 Monarchy, four tracks from there, and the same is true with Ad Infinitum's uh, Chapter 2 Legacy as I'm approaching this, and I'm now on the third track off the album of what I'm covering. I'm going by the music videos for those of you who perhaps this is the first introduction to them. But I've been very impressed. Again, as I've said, I've been a longtime fan of European metal, and even more specific to that, uh, symphonic metal. And I love exploring new talents out there that I didn't know existed before. But perhaps I've come across through, you know, others, whether it be from recommendations from listeners in terms of people who have engaged with me in the past in regards to my music coverage and have suggested names. And I've certainly, for those of you who perhaps are like, You've, I've suggested plenty of names and you haven't you know, covered them yet, I'm building a list. <laughs> and it's, it's exhaustive, but I will probably get to those groups you're mentioning eventually because I've been given so many recommendations at this point and also in comparison the number of tracks that I've personally purchased at this point that I've got ready to cover and I haven't listened to they're just you know they're ready for me to listen to them I haven't experienced them yet it's an exhaustive list but I'll probably get to them eventually we'll see how long it takes but I'm I'm dead set on it but right now again I'm in this phase of just trying to get as many introductions as I can and appreciate craft from artists I didn't know really existed before. And it's still, I, I'm in my early days in a, in a, um, a romance to Adam Finitum's creative ventures, but I've been very impressed again with Chapter 1 Monarchy. And having listened to the album in full, I was elated. But the four tracks primarily that I covered on this channel, you know, I was astounded by in their quality. And the same has been true of Chapter 2 Legacy, which is a subsequent issue. It's just so beautiful. At this point, I've covered Unstoppable and Inferno, the most recent of those tracks. I mean, Unstoppable was great, but Inferno just so much dimension to that song. It's so beautiful. I'm still kind of in this phase of shock with it. But now we're going to continue forward with some new works. As I've said, I'm going by the music videos and we have about four in total. And I am kind of turning back time in this case uh, to the earlier days of Ad Inferno. But again, like I said, it's an earlier introduction. And so I'm kind of building my understanding of them as a group and perhaps introducing some of you, which I would hope that these videos in some part do. Um, for those of you who had never come across Ad Infinitum, but maybe you're kind of, maybe you're a metalhead like me and you're looking for talents that you didn't know were out there, or you're just, you know, curious about what types of artists, you know, I might be into and enjoy music with me on a first impression. Like I've said for a long time, it's always been an ambition for me to bring music on in a more principal role in this channel in terms of the entertainment ventures of what I cover. And I didn't found this channel on music, but it's always been on my heart to want to bring it in much more so than I did starting off. It took me a couple years, but... You know, 2022, I really built off of this, and I've certainly succeeded in my ambition in part, and that ambition is still ongoing, and it, as it pertains to the 2023 calendar year, it's going to be, I can already sense we're going to, you know, I'm going to definitely expand on probably what I, <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm in, in my mind thinking, the you know, back of it, like, this is going to be a lot of work for me in terms of the editing, but I appreciate making these videos. Again, for me, um... And this is not to speak to, again, other entertainment ventures of what I cover and be too demeaning, but for me, music coverage has always been the favored... Well, not music coverage, but music specifically is the favored art form, but music coverage is... It's a passion project for me, and I've always wanted to, again, bring it into a grander focus on this channel, but just... I've had so much satisfaction in being able to enjoy music with you on a first impression, and perhaps bring new fans in, and new listeners, right? And appeal to perhaps others who... Maybe your... But... Your coming into parallel music or art tastes with me. And I would appreciate that because I don't necessarily have that much connection in my real life to people that share my art, my uh, music tastes or art ta or tastes. You know, I said before, I have, I, am, it, I have a very small social circle. And for me, I kind of judge the familiarity of artists by that. And when it comes to European talent, which has been an absolute treat for me to get in a grander appreciation of, and I've really enjoyed my journey there from, you know, my basement, of course, <laughs> really in person. I'm not, I'm not a, traver, a traveler physically, but I'm like, well, if I can be complacent and, you know, experience pseudo-traveling, <laughs> it's enough. You know, maybe I'll make it to Europe eventually. I don't know. I mean, I'm tempted to based on half the groups I listen to. But I've said before, you know, with my music tastes, it puts me in a more of a selective position and a niche space because not many of the groups I listen to are, are associated listens among my peers uh, that I know personally. And so for me, I do try really hard to get people involved. <laughs> it's an upward stream I'm paddling many times, but in the course of you know, covering music on this channel, I have been able to meet fans of groups and that share my music taste, which has been fabulous in my opinion. Again, like I've said, everyone craves connection. 
And for me, you know, I've I've needed that. And I've really desired for to have that to some extent with music. And bringing it onto this channel, it's opened so many doors. And I really appreciate, again, that I've been able to put out a lot of effort in making these videos specifically. They're my favorite videos to edit and to publish, even though, again, they take quite an amount of time <laughs> and labor. I'm, I'm very happy to spotlight artists that deserve a grander focus. And if Ad Infinitum, I would never speak against that. They're absolutely exquisite. I've loved their musical, musical productions at this point. Every listen I've given on this channel has been an event in itself. That's at least the way I see it. And even in my private listens, again, like I said, when I listened to the entirety of Chapter One Monarchy, I've listened to it at this point several times. I'm so fascinated by their artistic excellence. It just, which is common among European groups. It's very common. But I'm just so happy of what I'm finding in this realm of the world. I'm, I'm more than satisfied. And again, you know, there's other places in, you know, our world today where talent, it, it, talent can be anywhere, right? You just have to know where to find it and you have to be willing to introduce yourself perhaps the more niche places or what others would maybe describe as a little more niche. Certainly, again, in my circles. And I'm happy to do that because when it comes to Europe, I've just been, I've been floored. <laughs> I'm still in such a deep romance. I just I love these groups that I've come across, and Ad Infinitum is no exception. So let's build off what we've heard previously with uh, Chapter Two, Legacy. That's the album I'm covering right now, and I've just at this point covered both Unstoppable and Inferno. Now we're going to add on Afterlife, uh, and this one is also similar to other types of uh, uh, entertainment ventures within the European music landscape, especially within the metal scene. I've come across new talent through collaborations. This is how I came across Ad Infinitum with uh, Melissa Boney specifically, her credits through Mortemia. For those of you who maybe don't know that name, and I've covered a lot of his works on this channel as, you know, of right now, and I got a couple more I'm going to be doing in the future. He is a Norwegian one-man symphonic gothic metal artist from the uh, band Sirenia. That was, I believe, uh, Morton's creation as well. And Mortimia, he's such a talented guy, but the track that features Melissa Bonney, Devastation Bound, is my favorite on the piece. It's not only a beautiful tune, but her vocals were excellent. But that's how I came across that event, and was through that collaboration. That's been the pattern for many other artists as well, um, especially when it comes to Mortimia. It's been the gateway I've learned about a lot of different talents, because that's his model. It's usually, you know, him doing, I mean, sometimes he's involved with the vocals, but it's usually him with the, the piece structuring. But the model is that he brings on some collaborative artists from another European country. That's been pertinent pretty much for the entirety of his work, whether it be the Pandemic Pandemonium Sessions or his new release, the COVID Aftermath Sessions, and both have been great. That's what we have for this video. And in this case, I'm getting a first introduction to uh, Nils Johan Malin, who is a... Um, Swedish artists. I've come across a lot of Swedish artists on this channel. In fact, I've spotlighted quite a number, or have yet to spotlight a few. Uh, but he's been... Registered, again, first introduction. He's been a part of, presently, both Amaranth, I've heard that name, and uh, Dy 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 Dynasty? I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I'm trying to give it maybe a, a European flair where <laughs> that's not existent. Um, I've heard of Amaranth. Dy Dynasty? I guess it's Dynasty. It's just spelled differently. Um, that one's new to me. He's certainly done a lot with them, though. Let's get an introduction to his talents. Maybe some of you are familiar. You know, I, I, I would imagine people are coming to this video from different angles. If you're familiar with Ad Infinitum, I'm sure there's probably many of you, but as well as maybe new listeners, maybe this is the first introduction for you. And maybe for a lot of us, it's the first introduction to uh, Nils Johan Malin. Let's give him a try. Again, I'm always game for new talents. And in this case, you know, it's a first introduction with a very good complimentary group. Like, again, Ad Infinitum has just impressed me so much in the symphonic metal scene. I'm happy to give him any listen that I can. In this case, let's see what Nils uh, Malin has to offer as an artist as well. Maybe this will, you know, in the future, I'll be able to look at... Again, Amaranth is a familiar name. I don't know how, but uh, Dynasty, maybe they'll come up too. We'll see. I mean, they've been around for apparently quite a while, since 2007. As always, I'm going to go ahead and queue up the video, and we're going to be able to listen to this track as well as watch this uh, cinematic piece too, and the... Video compliments at Infinite Producers are always an enjoyment. And if you're not familiar with the way I format my music reactions, I always try to provide every convenience I can to suit audience tastes. So if you're somebody that likes to read along with the message of the piece, the lyrics will be provided in the video and they'll track along with the song as we proceed forward. All right, Afterlife. Good name, by the way. Let's see where this track goes. Okay, strong, aggressive metal riff.
Oh, but it's opening. I like this. Very engaging. Oh, I like. Oh, the edge is great to this. <laughs> Beautiful structure, as always. This album is really building off well off the first. What a message! <laughs> That symphonic blend on the uh, on the background is excellent. Oh, <laughs> some real variants here. Probably the most I've heard from one of their works. Going back to the softer edge. This song is so unusual in its pacing, I absolutely love it. Oh man, wow. Nils Johan Malin, I will keep that name in mind. Great compliment to Melissa. Oh. So that was him in the introductions, I wonder. Greater focus here, but oh. Just synonymous of one another, it's beautiful. Wow. This has to be one of my favorite constructions of a track on this on this channel thus far when I've covered in music. It's it just gets even more diverse as we go along. Uh, uh, wow. Told you! I think it is an event. <laughs> Wow. This gets better and better. That is one of their best. I say that almost like every track I come across. Really, it just gets better and better and better. Um, like I said, um, I've covered a lot of music at this point of this channel, and I've got many more songs coming that perhaps I haven't come across that would be similar to this in the track construction, and it is very... Um, actually, let me rephrase that. It's varied. Like, extensively. That is, like I said, the most diverse in construction I think I've ever heard. And it is so satisfying. And again, you know, I just have to say, I don't care at all if my music taste put me in a niche space. At this point, I'm happy to be an anomaly. <laughs> if it's for experiences like Ad Infinitum, you know? And I know there are, of course, other fans out there. I, you know, I'm not, again, speaking like, oh, I, I'm too niche. I'm speaking, again, in comparison to my surroundings in terms of people that I know. I don't say it to boast. Maybe they should envy me because, again, the music that I enjoy, it's... Not, I've always gravitated toward the alternative, especially with stuff in the metal scene. But for me, this the mainstream music, and there are maybe some exceptions. To be fair, there's maybe some I covered on this channel. In fact, that qualify as mainstream that um, I like what they've produced. But a lot of what, like, let's say my friends listen to, most of it maybe tends to be, let's say, in the pop scene. I, for the most part, can't stand pop music. There's just not this original flair that Ad Infinitum has, or by extension, European metal. And I see this quite often, but talk about taking art to its limits. 
Like, that piece is just... It, it's shocking to me to see how well the variations fit, you know, together. It really is just such a diverse mixture. And I'm... <laughs> but it's yet still... It's got this thread to it that's so well-constructed. But, like, the way it was introduced to the point that we end with this song, it's... This song's taken us on, like, this windy road of so many different uh, um, paths... It, but it's just such an ah uh, my gosh <laughs> uh, I mean I even lost focus on the lyrics as well going through this because the music is just such a distraction it's a very pleasant distraction I mean it's definitely I'd say more of like a uh, a, an ominous presence like you read the choruses you pray day after day for a second chance in the afterlife um <laughs> Especially with the open O2, like chanting your name, all the souls in hell await. As a man, you will die. Like, it's, it's quite the start. I mean, it's not really like a pleasant entryway, but then blended with the song, and again, marrying that to a darker gothic vision, or at least in, in emotion. Ugh, I love it. And can I just say, by the way, um, I did comment this as well with Unstoppable when I covered that track. They definitely reduced the size of their uh, Plague Doctor masks. This is very reminiscent to me in terms of, you, for some of you who follow this channel for long enough, you know that I've tended to cover cinema for a while, especially stuff existing in long franchises. Um, DC Comics, maybe those of you who aren't familiar. Anybody else get a bit of a you know, connection here if you are a DC fan, like Court of Owls, Chic? <laughs> like, the last time we saw, you know, at event of Plague Doctor masks, they were entirely face concealing. In this case, you can kind of see half, you know, the eye structure's covered, but you have, in this case, the facial details that you can see. I don't know. It was kind of reminiscent. It's just, I know it's a side thought, but, meh, I found it funny. Either way, this is a beautiful piece. Like, just everything to it. On the musical structure, again, that's... That's what you notice immediately. And it's really, I, I would say, the main takeaway. But I'm just so impressed about Infinitum. And, you know, to make sure I regard this point, don't skip over it. Uh, Nils Johan Malin. Incredible talent in terms of his vocals. And he he reminds me a lot. Um, well, who's the artist I'm thinking of? You know, I, I've covered, I've talked about this before in terms of Swedish groups. There's artists from several actually that I've covered at this point. Uh, a lot of Linda Tony Gron's offerings over be from Fall of a Cipher or Anima Veil. I've covered them. Dead by April as well. Longtime favorite in the electronic Swedish metal scene. Dead by April, in fact, did a collaboration a couple years ago with that's the wrong group. Uh, let me see. Off of Worlds Collide. That was their fourth album. Uh, with Tommy uh, Korterberg. I think he's a, big, a bigger name in the music landscape in Europe. I haven't come across much of his stuff yet other than that introduction. This guy's vocals reminded me a lot of his style. Um, maybe he, Niels Johan Malin is a bit of a lighter energy and a higher pitch. But the wavering of his voice and then how well that's blended to uh, Melissa Bonney's vocals, like the two worked so well together. And I think they were present uh, in regards to a blend on the first uh, rendition of the chorus. But I think, I, 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 maybe I imagined it. Maybe I heard the music and it sort of acted in the place of vocals. But I, no, I think I heard him. It definitely became greater emphasized as it went on in terms of the ever two uh, uh, repeat choruses. But man, that song is just great. And so in the case of, as I was saying, of Nils Johan Malin, um, Amaranth and Dynasty, again, Amaranth is a familiar name and I don't know why. Maybe just because they're a big name. And he's, you know, I guess came across them recently in terms of their lineup because he joined as of 2017 in terms of doing the clean vocals. Again, I don't know how I know that name, but Amaranth and Dynasty, I'll keep that in regard. Like I said, you know, of collaborations. Don't be surprised if you see them eventually because it seems to be that's the path to I'm experiencing a lot of European artists. I find, I come across one and that's all these others that follow. Um, I'm sure he'll be a treat to hear on his own as well, but even though here... What can I say over that? He's one of the most talented vocalists in Europe that I think I've heard in a while. And I've heard many that maybe come across similar. Um, especially, like I said, with Tommy uh, Kohlberg, I get a real vibe of his vocals. But it's at a, his is a lower pitch. Again, from just one sampling, but for every step off of Dead, or Dead by April's Worlds Collide. This... This is... I keep saying this. Like, this is my favorite track thus far from Ad Infinitum. I just keep repeating that, but it's always to a new context. <laughs> but you 
you see why I gravitate toward the European metal lineup? I just don't find this, typically. I, I really don't. This type of artistic excellence and, and uh, vision, I just don't find at other places. Sometimes, yes, but it's usually in small helpings. And there's, again, like I've said, I, I would qualify, there are exceptions, and many of which I've covered on this channel, from America, uh, maybe other countries as well. I don't know how many other countries I've gotten to yet other than America and Europe. You know, I'll try to involve that eventually. Maybe you can go beyond if the opportunity comes up. But I'm just having such a great time with European music, and Ad Infinitum really is becoming such a staple listen for me. Like, I really cannot wait to listen to this album in full. Just even on this track, I want to have a repeat listen instantly. It's so dynamic. <laughs> Depth, dimension, atmosphere. This is everything I look for in symphonic metal. And I always find it exceedingly in Europe. And even, you know, with what I've looked at thus far, I'm always more and more impressed, it seems. <laughs> you know, as a band, you got to try and constantly up yourself in terms of your game. Ad Infinitum has done that so well on this album. Like, I'm really impressed. Oh, I'm sure, you know, as we get to chapter three, that's coming eventually. I'm, all, I'm nearing it in terms of my coverage. Um, this is, I, I'm just so impressed. <laughs> what are your guys' thoughts with uh, Afterlife featuring uh, Nils Johan Malin? I, I'm impressed. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are down below. And this was the first introduction for you. Um, you heard one of, again, I, I would say their most diverse offerings yet. And one of their best... <laughs> Really, it's a fresh experience for me in a number of ways. But maybe you're a longtime fan. Again, I'd love to hear your angle that you come from down below, should you wish to disclose that, as well as your thoughts on the piece. Favorite listen immediately. I really can't wait to listen to more from this album. I've got one more track I'm going to cover from it, and then I'm moving on to Chapter 3. Of course, I'm going to listen to this album in its entirety. I've already bought it, but... Um, wow. <laughs> to put it simply, just... Wow. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.